batteries. Large, high-tech batteries. Huge demand for rechargeable batteries. They're pursuing the search for the super battery. The battery's doing great. Do you wish the battery on your phone or laptop would last all week without needing to recharge? If so, perhaps you should consider not being such a spoiled brat. Given the limits of science, batteries are doing a pretty good job. They've completely changed how and where we communicate, work, and communicate to make it look like we're working. It's taken centuries of progress, from Alessandro Volta's first battery in 1799, for you to be able to doom scroll on your phone for eight hours a day. By the early 20th century, we'd become accustomed to disposable batteries, those nostalgic, tiny tubes of energy that powered our portable lifestyle. Double A's were everywhere, and yet somehow never included. Batteries not included. Batteries not included. Batteries not included. But those little power cylinders ran out, which in the case of your TV remote leaves two options. Buy new ones, or borrow the batteries from the fire alarm just one more time. Rechargeable batteries already existed, like the lead-acid batteries used in gas-powered cars. Hey cars, your guzzling gas and you need batteries? <laughs> Save some energy for the rest of us. Today's portable electronic devices are made possible by lithium. The first element of the second period is lithium. Element number three. Lithium isn't just used as a mood stabilizer that was once the pick-me-up ingredient in 7-Up. A soda that legend has it still exists. To smooth and mellow the acid sharpness in our drink, we add a combination of mineral salts, lithium and sodium citrates. It's also used to make lithium ion batteries. First commercialized by Sony for its camcorders in the early 90s, they've since become smaller, cheaper, quicker to recharge, and the world's leading cause of bar and restaurant goers asking staff, hi, would you mind just plugging my phone in behind the bar? <coughs> Lithium is the lightest metal in the world, unless you count 80s hair metal, which is just about as light as metal gets. Lithium is the reason batteries are so good at storing so much electricity in such a small package. And just like a Motley Crue concert, it's also known for unnecessary pyrotechnics. One minute, a customer is in a back room picking out a TV. The next, his pocket explodes into sparks and flames. He was working at a store at Grand Central Terminal when his pants suddenly and literally caught on fire. It's a man taken by complete surprise when his pants pockets burst into flames. An e-cigarette battery is blamed for the blast. It's not just vapes, it's products that are even more addictive, phones. In 2016, Samsung released its long-awaited Galaxy Note 7. So we gave the Note 7 the largest capacity battery of any Note we've ever made. Thank you. Turns out it was also the most explosive battery they had ever made. Just wanted to post this and share what just happened to my Note 7. But batteries can do so much more than explode in your pants. They're set to explode something even bigger, the global energy market. As rechargeable battery systems become more sophisticated, electric grids could become capable of producing excess electricity and keeping it for times of higher demand, such as, oh, I don't know, a pandemic that forces millions of people to stay at home all day, or when a cartoon character shocks themselves so bad that you can see their skeleton. Better batteries are also improving the future for renewable sources like solar and wind, which can generate a huge amount of power but need somewhere to store it. The city of Los Angeles is hoping that by 2023, 7% of its electricity will come from a solar facility backed with one of the world's biggest batteries. And you know what a bigger battery means, a bigger bunny. On a smaller scale, companies and DIY builders are scrambling to build batteries that can boost the utility of personal solar arrays and replace old fashioned generators. A convenient way to channel clean energy, save money, and make your home look like the inside of a computer. It's a rogue setup because there's a ton of people that don't want you to do this, right? And starting from the government, starting and the utilities, they don't want you to run off grid systems. But the biggest growth market for lithium ion batteries isn't electricity libertarians, it's electric passenger vehicles, which are already estimated to displace demand for more than 1 million barrels of oil per day, and are projected to become the single biggest market for lithium ion batteries over the next 20 years. And you can't say the words batteries and electric vehicles three times in the mirror without conjuring up Elon Musk, the billionaire Tesla CEO with both a wide-eyed curiosity and apparent emotional maturity of a young child. Tesla isn't just the world's largest electric automaker, it's very much in the battery business. 
In South Australia, Tesla built the world's biggest lithium-ion battery, capable of powering 30,000 homes. And just outside Reno, Nevada, Tesla is building what it claims will be the largest factory for making lithium-ion batteries in the world. It's not just going to be the biggest lithium-ion battery factory in the world, but it'll actually be bigger than the sum of all lithium-ion factories in the world. Countries are trying to get in on the battery-powered fun too, but because it's countries, it's war. The US, China and South Korea are some of the major players in the so-called battery wars. The race to control the technology, manufacturing capabilities and natural resources, like lithium and nickel, needed to create a new generation of super batteries and dominate the market, which I assume means leaving the other countries calling each other on rotary phones. China is already the world's biggest electric vehicle market and controls around 73% of the world's total lithium cell manufacturing capacity. The government has spent tens of billions of dollars supporting the industry, including massive subsidies to battery research and manufacturing. Companies in South Korea have been some of the battery game's biggest innovators, including LG Chem Limited, which recently became the world's largest manufacturer of electric vehicle batteries. And in the US, President Donald Trump seems fixated on buying Greenland, which is rich in rare earth minerals. As you can probably guess, the race to dig up the planet for the minerals needed for batteries has a cost. Extracting and disposing of metals used in lithium-ion batteries can be environmentally devastating, using tremendous amounts of water, tainting natural ecosystems, and even poisoning people in mining communities. While lithium is the namesake for the lithium-ion battery, one of today's biggest battery debates is about another metal, cobalt. In 1980, a researcher at Oxford named John Goodenough managed to outdo the limitations of his surname and found a way to vastly improve the power potential of rechargeable lithium batteries by using cobalt as the cathode. The mineral is now found in nearly every laptop or phone with a rechargeable battery. Two thirds of the world's cobalt comes from mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Many of these mines are run by multinational corporations and have abysmal safety records. Many smaller mines are run by independent operators with no oversight at all, often using child labour in extremely dangerous conditions. Unsurprisingly, there's growing social pressure on companies to stop using cobalt. And if the horrors of its mining weren't enough to change the minds of captains of industry, there's always the economic argument. Cobalt costs tens of thousands of dollars per tonne and is the most expensive material in an electric car battery. But the environmental argument requires more cobalt. In order for the EU to reach its climate goals, it projects it's going to need five times as much of the mineral in 2030. Scientists are experimenting with alternatives to cobalt in batteries, like nickel or a kind of a liquid electrolyte pathway. General Motors' Ultium battery will reportedly use 70% less cobalt than current alternatives. Elon Musk claimed a few years ago that future generations of his batteries would use no cobalt at all, but since then his company signed a deal with a European-owned mining firm to buy up to 6,000 tonnes of cobalt per year, which for the record is the opposite of no cobalt at all. Battery technology is a balancing act of size, cost, efficiency, ethics, and the occasional explosion. I'm assuming you're watching this on a screen. If you're not, it likely means you're in my home, in which case I'd kindly ask you to leave. As long as smartphone and laptop consumers like you want smaller, cheaper devices, staying charged will remain a challenge, and the race to find the next generation of battery technology will continue. There are solid state battery designs that do away with liquid electrolyte found in most current batteries. They'd probably still use lithium, but they'd be smaller, lighter, and less likely to explode, if you're into that sort of thing. There are new sodium ion batteries, flow batteries that use fluids to store electrochemical energy, advances using zinc, and excitement around metal air batteries that employ materials like aluminium, a metal that should confuse any American. Battery researchers aren't afraid to get weird with it either. Scientists have experimented using live viruses, sugar or fruit, and even diamonds and wood. There's no doubt batteries will keep getting better, more powerful, and hopefully produced in cleaner, less harmful ways. But for now, there will always be times when you'll be left wishing they'd last just a little bit longer.